if yourself or one of your loved ones is in a wheelchair, um, you know what the ulcers problem is about. Uh, there is an IoT device that will help, and it's called a sensorial mat. Davide uh, from Sensoria is here to tell us everything you need to know about this fantastic IoT project. It's today on the IoT Show. You're watching the IoT show. Molly V, your host. Thanks for joining again. Uh, today we are talking with Davide from Sensoria. And um, today we're going to talk about a new solution of theirs. Last time, Davide, you came on the IoT show was to present the smart boot. Uh, so we're no longer in the realm of the wearables today, but we'll talk about that. So before we jump into the Sensoria Mats project and, and product, actually, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Who are you? What is Sensoria, uh, one of our partners, but what are you guys doing? Sure. Hi, Olivier. Thank you for having us again. Uh, it's fantastic to have a chance to talk to you. Um, well, Sensoria was actually uh, funded by, uh, founded by two uh, former Microsoft uh, people, uh, myself and uh, Maurizio Macagno, our CTO. Um, I worked for Microsoft for a long time, over 23 years. And uh, Maurizio worked for Microsoft for, I think, another 15. So a combined, I guess, close to 40 years. Uh, <laughs> Old timers. <laughs> long, long time, yeah. So I was in charge of the healthcare solutions group's uh, uh, product uh, marketing and product management teams. So Health Vault and Amalga, uh, before they were acquired by GE, at least Amalga was. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, Maurizio worked on Xbox Live as one of the uh, lead program managers. On. So last time you came, I was mentioning you came for a smart boot solution that was connected to the internet through Azure IoT and providing tons of useful information to the consumers. Today it's a different topic. Uh, I want you to tell me a bit about the journey that led you from the smart boots to the, uh, the Sensorium Mat, the products you came here to talk about. No, that's a great question. And I, I think, you know, you know that at Sensoria, we are 100% focused on human augmentation, which is really IoT for the human body, right? So we call it IOMe <laughs> instead of IoT. <laughs> so everything we do is really all about injecting sensing technology into either garments, footwear, or accessories that uh, a human being is uh, either wearing or using every day, right? So the boot was a I think great example of what we can do to reduce risk of amputations uh, for diabetic foot ulceration. Um, and that product is going really well. The product is in the market right now and uh, uh, we have patients uh, using that. Uh, but what makes uh, Sensoria unique is our platform approach that quickly allows us to uh, engineer IOMe solutions that go far beyond a single uh, boot. So in, in the case of, uh, of Sensoria Mat, which is, the, which is the product that we're going to talk, talk about today, um, we had a hospital, uh, Rancho National Rehabilitation Center in, uh, in Los Angeles, reaching out to us and asking for this specific product. And that's, and that's, that's why we built it. So yeah, they, they reached out to you um, to address a specific um, problem space, a specific yep. uh, set of problems that they are facing that um, they need not just the mat, but they need an IoT solution around to help them out, right? Correct, correct. And the challenge was was a big challenge that we were simply not aware of. Um, so during the pandemic, uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, of course, uh, it's not wise for a county hospital uh, to bring patients into the clinic, uh, patients that offer, often uh, suffer from multiple comorbidities, like, again, diabetes or uh, even hypertension and others, uh, just to monitor the rehab, right? So uh, Rancho National Rehab Center is uh, one of the top six national rehabilitation centers uh, for uh, spinal cord injury patients. And what you see here on my slide is really some, some of the amazing and shocking numbers uh, when it comes to uh, spinal cord injury, right? So uh, people uh, th that are, you know, wheelchair bound, uh, for for years, obviously, because most of these patients have had some type of accident, usually either a traffic 
uh, related accident or uh, even uh, gun wounds and, and unfortunately others, right? People coming back from wars. Um, and at that point, uh, they suffered uh, damage to their spinal cord and they are uh, uh, using a wheelchair every day for the rest of their lives. Uh, what we didn't know is the fact that, uh, of course, in addition to that, there is a very large number of people uh, aging very quickly, the aging baby boomers like myself. And uh, of course, they have mobility challenge at some point. Uh, and so they spend many hours on a wheelchair. When they do, uh, the risk of ulceration uh, is very, very high. Uh, and uh, the ulceration uh, is a very, very uh, serious wound that uh, is very hard to heal. And so that's, that's the type of solution that uh, Rancho National Rehab Center asked us to build for them. Uh, and that's and that's and that's what we did. Something that can reduce the risk of ulceration, basically. Interesting, because indeed, like if you're not leaving it, having a, a relative that actually is going through that, like the notion of that, uh, you know, ulceration being developing when you're sitting all day long is not is not there. But so beyond beyond the actual, you know, comfort for the patients, uh, what is the other impact that this kind of problems is is generating? Yeah, we didn't know that uh, beyond, beyond, of course, the quality of life impact that you're uh, uh, really talking about, Olivier, is uh, there is a substantial financial impact, primarily for the taxpayer. Uh, pressure injury costs in the U.S. have skyrocketed by, a, a, you know, uh, in, in the last few years from $11.6 billion uh, in 2007. Uh, as you can see here, to $26.8 billion in 2019. And the wow. cost of treating a single pressure ulcer has increased from uh, close to $21,000 uh, to $151,700. So uh, no matter how you look at it, uh, this is a real, real challenge, right? For, it's, it's a challenge from a clinical standpoint because they're so hard to heal. It's a challenge for quality of life standpoint for the patient. And it's clearly a financial uh, challenge uh, because the cost uh, related uh, to this uh, problem is very, very high. And about, you know, I didn't know 60,000 people lose their life every year in the US for complications directly related to pres pressure ulceration. So it is a problem of epidemic proportions as well. Place so uh, way beyond the the pure comfort of the patients. It's it's definitely a big a big financial problem as well. So, so how you guys? How did you approach that? What is the the solution you guys have been working on to uh, help solve the problem or part of it? Well, what what the, what the hospital asked us to build is actually a fairly simple IoT solution, and uh, we built actually a fairly elegant one. Uh, but the real goal for us was really to understand what we needed to measure first. So what they wanted us to measure was very simple. They wanted to uh, make sure that the person on a wheelchair, either a spinal cord injury patient or the aging population, performs specific pressure relief exercises multiple times a day. And if they do, there is actually conclusive research. There are 54 research studies that actually come to the same conclusion at this point, that if they do that, like the exercise that you see on the slide here, the risk of ulceration is greatly reduced. But they have to be consistent and disciplined enough to actually do this type of exercises multiple times a day, left lean, right lean, forward leans. Yes, today you have to have a, a PT professional that comes and, yep. and, and helps you do it, regular appointments, like cost money, uh, and, and basically there's the safety issue we're mentioning where in COVID times and you don't want to expose your healthcare personnel and the patients to, to, to viruses and things like that. So, but yeah, I, I start seeing, you know, where you are going with ads, right? So <laughs> IoT plus this need. So tell me about the Sensoria Matt, and how you uh, implement a solution that solved that problem. Exactly. So what we built is, is a cushion which has an insert that allows us to do three things. We can track not just the number of repetitions for pressure re relief activity multiple times a day in real time and remotely, but we can also monitor how well each patient is performing each repetition. So both quantity and quality of each repetition can be monitored. Number two, we have built a mobile application, both for Android and iOS, 
that basically it's a, it's really a Fitbit for a, a person in a wheelchair. NPR <laughs> News actually referred to that as the unfit bit. <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> like that. <laughs> so yeah, so so that that is really what it is. It's it's really a mobile application that multiple times a day reminds the patient or the individual. It, it, it may not be a patient at that point, right? Yeah. To just do this type of exercises and do them well. And then at the end of the day, through Azure and IoT Central, we're able to monitor both uh, the patient's or the user's health, but also the device health. And so that's uh, that's what we call the Sensoria Cloud Web Dashboard, where a clinician, like a physical therapist, as an example, can monitor the whole patient population remotely without you know bringing the patient in and uh, having the risk of uh, infection uh, by doing that, right? So Nice. And we'll talk about technology, which is underneath or, or, or above, depending on where you're standing, right, in the cloud versus in the, in the device itself. Um, I can see a gamification coming as well, right? You can actually have leaderboards and things like that for that. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and we want to make it fun. Actually, the behavioral science component that you're referring to is very, very strong, and both both the USC, uh, Keck School of Medicine, and uh, UPenn, uh, and Johns Hopkins actually are working with us on uh, defining and building that type of behavioral feedback. You know, constructive feedback and you know, positive reinforcement can actually have a pretty, pretty substantial impact on patient adherence as well. I'm amazed to see it, it was not met, it was not done before, right? So I'm, I'm yeah. kind of amazed. Yeah. Yeah, Impressive. you're absolutely right. It's super simple and very elegant. This is actually what the cushion looks like. It's handmade, uh, and uh, it comes with what we call transparent computing paradigm. What I mean with that is is what you see on on this slide here. The electronics is uh, 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 built and embedded into an insert with textile pressure sensors. Let me underline textile, because we, we cannot use traditional sensors, of course. We, we don't want to have anything that could potentially harm the patient, of course, right? So uh, the textile pressure sensor infused insert, the sensoria mat, <laughs> is uh, actually at the bottom of the cushion. So we don't uh, change or alter the mechanical characteristics of the cushion itself. The cushion itself is built with a very high quality memory foam and uh, a layer of uh, gel at the top. And the layer of gel at the top is actually designed to reduce the temperature, of course, and keep uh, that area very, very cool for as long as possible. You know, our body has not been designed to sit for many hours every day for a number of years, right? So we have to use and leverage both the electronics and the sensor capabilities, but also the mechanical characteristics of the material as well. And last but not least, as you can see here, the whole system is completely discrete, and uh, and uh, and uh, even the IMU, the Sensoria Core uh, electronics, is completely hidden into a pocket that has been designed from the ground up for that type of behavioral aspect. So, uh, the person sitting on a wheelchair may not want to see or be seen uh, that with the fact that it's been monitored, right? So, so that's yep. that's why we built it that way. But the cushion is made, you know handmade and is very cool in itself. And the insert you see here is a very thin textile textile insert as well. And do I see the same connector that you used to have on the uh, on the boots? We have the same connector actually that we're using on our socks. You've seen our Michael J. Fox yeah, parking socks. Yeah. yeah, that's the same connector. The female, co the AFE, the analog front end is the same. Yeah, I remember that. So it's it's pretty amazing. I love that. Um, I think you have a demo to, to yeah. go with that. Yeah, actually, I will ask uh, Maurizio to actually walk us through the architecture, uh, the Azure architecture, the IoT central components, and the fire uh, the fire server uh, components as well, and then actually show you the demo of the system as well. So what we have here on the left is uh, the clinician dashboard for Sensoria Mat, uh, and on the right we have the mobile application for the patients. So uh, as, as mentioned before, uh, we have a triage-like uh, color-coded system where uh, all the patients of the population of Dr. John Smith in this case uh, is uh, managing and uh, each of them can, can actually be uh, looked into specifically. But in general, when we start a new therapy for a new user, uh, we have two solutions, we have two options. One is that to integrate to a third-party 
EMR system, for example, for a bigger uh, healthcare organization, they might they will have their own uh, system they want to interface with to avoid re-inputting the same data over and over again. And so thanks to uh, the fire uh, interoperability uh, given us to the Azure APR for fire, we can uh, enable those scenarios really quickly. And the other option is to uh, create, of course, a new, a new patient right here. Um, in this specific scenario of the sensoria mat, the parameters are really the, 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 the most important parameters are, are two. The time between reliefs, which is usually between 15 and 30 minutes, and the time, uh, the duration of the relief per se. So again, 15, 30 seconds, 60 seconds. It really depends on the specific specific comorbidities and situation of the patient. So that's up to the to the um, to the clinician to decide, although he could also uh, leave a chance for the patient to adjust those parameters if they wanted to. Once the device uh, and, and the patient are created, uh, basically all it's, it's, it's a matter of providing this QR code to the specific user that can go home, download the application and sign up with a QR code. So without passwords or usernames, they can already be bound to the system and start pull, pushing data to the, to the system. On the right here, and also this sound that you were hearing in the background, uh, it's basically the, the essence of the application. The application does two things. It monitors this data continuously and uh, acquiring uh, information about my stance as a patient on the, on the wheelchair. And if detects movement in the appropriate way, so in those two options, left and right, uh, lean or forward lean, it will track the fact that I did an exercise. If I don't do it, then it will start reminding me and then keep reminding me until I do this exercise. So in this case, uh, I have been uh, not doing anything since the past two hours. Uh, I was not on the chair during the between 12 and two. And so uh, in this case, there were not, not expected leans from, from my part, but then as I sit at 2 p.m. for, uh, for doing uh, this presentation, after 15 minutes, he started um, telling me to, to do the exercise. And this is active even if I don't uh, use uh, the application, if I'm just uh, using the phone for something else. As soon as I do the movement that I'm expected to do, so now I'm leaning to, the, to my left uh, to uh, basically engage with the cushion, you see that uh, even if the app is not uh, in, uh, in the foreground, uh, the notification guides me to the fact that I am, that the, the lean has now been detected and I need to do a 15 seconds lean on one side. And then uh, since I choose to do a left right lean, then I need to do a lean on, on the other side. So it's, uh, it's going to detect that. Anything, in any case, if I, uh, stop doing that and not enough. Uh, the, um, the timer, you see that after a while it stops and will uh, it will eventually fail if I don't do the, the, the exercise correctly. So it's, it's sort of coaching me uh, into doing the exercise in the proper way because uh, the importance of uh, uh, letting the blood flow is, is what matters uh, for a continuous duration of time. Once the, um, the exercise is completed, I can then um, go back to my normal uh, doing something else while uh, for the next 15 minutes I don't do I don't need to do it. Uh, but the timer now has started again. So for uh, for 15 minutes, uh, the app will just monitoring uh, the fact that I am um, on the chair and so expecting to do another um, another exercise in 15 minutes. Of course, if I if I leave the chair um, with with a time that of course a spinal cord injury patient uh, will will take, you see that the status uh, goes out of wheelchair and the countdown uh, goes away because uh, we are not, we are not expecting of course uh, exercise in the in the in the coming future. We also have some. Total counters, total metrics, uh, a bit a la Fitbit, how much time I spent on the wheelchair, how much time I was off, how much time um, the system doesn't know because, for example, the, the, the device was on charger and so on. And so all these metrics are also sent in the background uh, to, to the cloud. So here you can see the application is, is basically pushing all those messages uh, via the IoT Hub queue with uh, not only the individual counters minute by minute, but also 
the individual events, including failed events. So it's also possible by the from the clinician standpoint or even from the research standpoint, grab all this data that is uploaded into the Fire API server and analyze completely the behavior of the patient and with respect of, of uh, his uh, potential output, positive or negative outcome of the therapy. Um, <clears throat> the last thing I want to show you here is basically a drill down on the patient. So where uh, once the, the, the doctor realized that this patient should be looked into more closely, he can drill down and see on a day by day how the adherence was uh, going well or not and also look at the individual day by day data of uh, expected leans and uh, left and right or forward leans. And so could also the, the user uh, if, if they wanted to. Uh, so here it's the pressure relief history. So in, in this case, the same data is pulled down and, uh, and analyzed uh, on a day by day, week or monthly basis. Um, we store the data um, on the app only for the needed time to push it to the to the web and uh, the fact that the app might uh, potentially not be connected to the network does not prevent the data to be reaching the the, the, the cloud at some point as soon as it as soon as, soon as the data um, connectivity is, is available very nice demo so let's talk a bit about what's under the hoods here uh david please so tell me a bit about you know your use of the azure services of the microsoft services and other actually um that that are involved in the solution yeah as you as you can as you can actually see here this is really just a summary of uh, what Maurizio just uh, talked about so as you can see we use a number of services uh, from the left to the right you know, from the end user application all the way to the our own Sensoria Health uh, services. We're leveraging IoT Central. We're leveraging the Fire API server, which we, by the way, contributed some of the code to the open source uh, version of that. So super happy for the collaboration with the Healthcare Next team on that. And then, of course, the Fire Connector uh, for Azure as well. So uh, we see a fantastic opportunity here really to expand the number of devices. We talked about uh, you know, the SOC, we talked about the boot uh, in previous uh, uh, sessions or in videos, and today we talked about the Sensoria mat. You will see uh, Sensoria coming out with uh, additional uh, solutions, IOME solutions that leverage exactly the same infrastructure and architectural approach. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons I was about to ask why using Microsoft IoT Central and other solutions. I do see in the middle the uh, the Fear Connector for Azure, which I, I we have a, an IoT show that we uh, recorded about this, uh, which is pretty interesting and cool because we see that different healthcare and medical you know uh, actors or entities are, are definitely navigating or or gravitating around the the Fear Connector, um, and and also IoT Central. Tell me, you know, in a few words, why IoT Central? Why is it so important for you to let leverage such a uh, app platform? Well, IoT Central makes it uh, a lot easier for us, uh, thanks also to IoT Hub, to, to manage a broad number potentially of uh, devices. Let me give you some examples here. Uh, we just launched a COVID-19 specific smart band uh, to monitor heart rate, blood oxygenation, and temperature. Uh, I'm wearing one. Um, we can leverage IoT Central and connect even existing devices that we had our partners in Asia, in this case, develop and build for us and quickly deploy and manage the health of the device itself um, and monitor the health of the device itself and not just, uh, just the user, of course. Uh, and then uh, it seamlessly, seamlessly connects to our provisioning services. So we use a simple QR code metaphor uh, for that. So we do have uh, a simple provisioning uh, infrastructure that we can deploy very, very quickly across a number of scenarios as well. Awesome. Good use of this technology. I love that. Um, and well, you know what, uh, Davide, I think we'll uh, we'll uh, send some links for our uh, viewers to know where to learn more about the Sensorium Mat. Uh, but in general, I look forward to have you again on the IoT show for your next magical IoT product. Um, I, I 
do you think that you're from a personal perspective not because i'm sitting all day long but because uh, i have relatives who are actually in a wheelchair i think this is really moving the needle for them i i really uh think that this is going to be a huge change uh so very much appreciate what you guys are doing in that realm no Olivier, thank you thank you for your support and uh if uh anyone uh listening or watching this video wants to support the hospital. We're actually supporting a Kickstarter campaign with them, with Rancho National Rehabilitation Center. And uh, sensoriamat.com is, uh, is, uh, is the link to go to uh, to learn more about Sensoria Mat and potentially, you know, buy one for your loved ones at a discounted price. That's awesome, David. Well, thanks a lot for joining me on the show today and, and talk about Sensoria and, and what you guys are doing. For you who are watching, thanks a lot for joining us as well. Uh, if you want to learn more about uh, the Sensorium Mat and contribute uh, and eventually get your own or for your family, uh, sensoriummat.com is the link you have to go to. And other than that, don't forget to subscribe. See you soon on the show. Davide, have a good one. Talk to you soon.